Hi, I'm Hannah, a stained glass artist with a laser. That's a fancy home water jet device I can use to cut my glass for me. In this video, I'll be breaking down exactly how I use it. Bear in mind, if you're an experienced water jetter or an engineer or someone already familiar with CAD drawing tools, this might not be the video for you. This is the video where I hold your hand and take you through all of the minutia because you just want a tool to work for you. You don't want to go take a whole darn course on it first. Alrighty, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is start with a pattern. And that pattern needs to be in a format the Wazer can recognize, which is a DFC or SVG file. If you're already creating your patterns in one of those formats, you'll be a few steps ahead, but here's what I do. I start with my pattern either sketched on paper or drawn digitally on my iPad. Once I have this pattern, I use a free program called Inkscape, so get yourself to the point where you have both Inkscape and a copy of your pattern on your computer. I'll use the pattern in Inkscape, and then I use the Bezier Curve tool, this one here, and I trace around my pattern to recreate the lines. The nice thing about this is with the vector lines, I can actually adjust and clean up any wiggly bits. I can also duplicate and flip things to make them more symmetrical than they would be from just from my hand drawing. Once I've traced everything, I need to ensure everything is a series of closed shapes. As I'll show you later, when you use the laser to cut glass, you cut out each piece individually, so all pieces need to be separate. You can either send a bunch of already separate pieces to the laser, or do what I do, which is selecting any spots where lines join up and making sure they're connected. Side note, the Wazer software has the ability to split the pattern apart, ignore some sections, and resize things, so you may choose to do that in Inkscape or in the Wazer WAM software, but I'm going to show my preference here. If I can pull the end of a line away, that means it's not an enclosed shape, so I'll make sure I have enough nodes, that's the fulcrum points on the line, to meet up with my shape if I need to add nodes with this button, then I will, and then I'll select both nodes, click the Join Node button to connect them together. I'll then use the Object to Path tool to make sure it's all a uh, path. I don't know why, but it helps. Definitely don't use the stroke to path tool or it'll create a bunch of duplicate nodes that will make things challenging for you later. Once this is all done, I'll have my pattern in all enclosed shapes, which means the Wazer can read and use it. The Wazer software can also split the pieces all out for me, as mentioned, which is why I didn't bother fully splitting it on my own in this software. I might be done now, or I might want to make a few changes. Remember that this file is telling the laser to cut all the pieces out of any glass I'll put into it. However, the chances are pretty high that I won't be wanting my entire glass pattern to be all one type of glass. So at this point, I have the option to make duplicates and maybe separate parts of the pattern out by color. It's not 100% necessary since I can just ignore these parts later in the Wazer software, but worth noting that it is an option here, I'm just not doing it. Finally, I might do some resizing. If I want to resize the entire pattern in one go, I can use the Inkscape tools to dictate the real size via this drop-down to select inches or millimeters. Once the pieces are split apart, if I do any resizing to one piece, then I run the risk of my pieces not fitting with each other, so I like to resize all together. And after that, my file's good to go. I'll save it in plain SVG format so it's ready. Again, all of this can be skipped if you have a different method for creating a file with all of your separate pattern parts in SVG or DFC format. And now we'll take it to the Wazer. The Wazer WAM software is available via the Wazer website. Once you have this downloaded and open, you can open the saved pattern file and it should put your pattern in for you. As I mentioned before, you have a bunch of options now, so let's walk through them. First, you can use the split function. This is the option I mentioned before. You're able to take your file and automatically split it out into all the separate pieces so you can move them around individually. If this function doesn't work, it means one of your shapes isn't fully enclosed. So if that happens, just head back to your pattern and check for any detached nodes. You can also use this function to create duplicates of your pattern if you need to, which is quite handy if you want to do multiples of the pattern all in one run. Secondly, you have the scale and position tool. This is the one where you can resize, flip, and move pieces around. As I already resized my pattern in Inkscape, I won't use any of the scale functions here, though if I were doing some bulk cutting of, say, circles, for example, this would be an easy way to make size changes now. But I will take this opportunity to pick the spot on the cut bed where my pattern will be cut out. The lines of the Wham image correspond with the lines on the cut bed of the machine, so this will give you a general idea of where you'll be water jetting. This gets increasingly more important as you cut more projects, as the cut bed will get worn down over time. The third option is material. This one is pretty easy for my purposes as I'm using 3mm soda lime glass, but you can see there's a number of options here. I'm pretty sure each of them comes with built-in settings for the machine to know how hard to go, how much grit and pressure to use, so it is important to pick the right one. Fourth, we are picking our cutting path. You have the option of center, outside, or inside cutting. I do get particular about this step as I find this is where I can make adjustments for my pattern to fit better. You'll have to play with the options to get used to it, but what I'll be doing is working from the inside out and alternating options. The theory is this. 
if I cut on the center line for all pieces, I'll be cutting the space or the lines in between the pieces of the pattern. And honestly, that might actually be perfect for letting a glass piece, though that's on my list to test for spacing. But for copper foil, I like my pieces to be close together as possible. By alternating the line cuts, so using outside on the middle piece and inside on the next set, etc., it means basically that I'm leaving the lines intact on some and then removing that extra cut space on the next ones. It's hard to make this arrangement work perfectly, but it definitely helps finesse any spacing problems. You'll notice you also have a no cut option here. This is really handy if you've imported your entire pattern, but you also only want to cut out, but you only want to cut out, say, one color of it, so you don't need certain parts. You can either run multiple files with different parts of your pattern, or just activate the parts you want for this run. Fifth, we are looking at tabs and leads. Tabs are critical. You can check out my last video for proof. So we need to make sure we are adding them. Wham does have an automatic function. However, I like to select my locations of the tabs based on wherever it will be easiest to grind off later, which is usually on a flat spot or an outside curve. When you add tabs, you'll be leaving a little bit of uncut space to keep your cut piece attached to your sheet of glass, so it will leave a tiny spike of glass on your pieces. I leave the automatic 2mm tab size personally, as I found it works well. It kind of holds the glass in place, but it's really easy to break the glass back out again after. I also make a rule of adding two tabs per cut piece on opposite sides of the piece. This was a suggestion from the Wazer team, and I found it really works well to keep the pieces attached. Six, we are on our cut. I always make sure I'm using the Find option as I'm doing precision work. I like to save my file once as a Wazer Wham file so I can edit it later. I might not actually want to change anything, but down the road I might easily want to change my position on the cut bed, so it's easier to have the file ready for that. And then I'll save the G-code version to my SD card to move it, move it physically to the Wazer. One last thing you might want to do is check out your file in NC Viewer. This is a website that shows you how your file will cut. Will cut. I found this exceptionally helpful when one of my files randomly, okay, not randomly, I messed it up, started double cutting all my lines. To use it, open ncviewer.com and then go back to WAM and save your G-code file. When the little dialog box pops open at the top, click open and open it in Notepad or another text editor. Mine does this automatically. Then copy all the text junk in here and go back to NC Viewer, replace all the NC Viewer instruction stuff in this box by highlighting it and then pasting in your G code. Then click plot and navigate in the main win window to find the visual of your file. You can then click the play button to watch how the Wazer will navigate your file. Once you're happy with the file and you've moved it onto the SD card, now you can move that card physically onto the Wazer. Now we'll need to fasten all the glass we'll be working with to the Wazer surface. I've set up my file, as you saw, to cut one color on this part of the cut bed and this other color on the other part. So I'll leave the WAM image open on my computer to reference where I need to put my glass. I could also run the file in two passes, as mentioned, cutting one part first and then the other, whatever is easier. I also decided for this particular file not to bother cutting this one single piece with the Wazer, since it's the only one in this color and it's just faster to do it myself. These options and how you treat them will always be different depending on the file, the glass, the pattern, the color choices, all of that. Once I have my glass in place, I'll turn on the Wazer, turn on my water, and run through the startup. The little screen shows you all the steps, so I'll move the cutting head over to my start point, make sure my water is on and my grit is topped up, and empty anything out of the grit hopper so there's room to collect the grit. Then I'll adjust the height of this part. You take the little plastic tool and make sure the head is not going to hit anything. So try to make sure it's adjusted to the highest point you'll be cutting anywhere on the cut bed and then you can let it go. Each file will take different amounts of time, so I'll just go do something else while the Wazer works for me. I always stay in the basement within earshot though in case anything weird happens. When the Wazer is done, I pull out all the glass and give it a little rinse and then check it out. There's a few things I'll still need to do before I can get into the remaining stained glass steps. Each of these little tabs, as I mentioned, need to be cut through and ground off, so if you did position them well enough though, it's a super quick move at the grinder. Then I'll dry them off and fit them together and add any additional glass parts I might not have used the Wazer for. And now here we're at the traditional stage. It's the standard foiling, soldering, chemical treatments, and patina you usually do for stained glass. Let me just breeze over that part. There's so many ways to incorporate the Wazer into the glass process from here, but hopefully some of this basic foundational stuff helps you get started and get comfortable with using it. I'm loving playing around and finding the best methodology, and I can't wait to tackle another project.